All right, just letting the interwebs know that I got my annual haircut. The I had a new barber, new stylist. He was a young fellow, real strong from the city. And uh, he was surprised, you know, I only get one. I told him I only get one haircut a year. And... So, this is kind of like the difference between weather and climate. And people have been freaking out about the weather. We went from freezing weather to suddenly having 85, 90 degree Fahrenheit it's hot summer weather. And now we're going to go back to freezing weather a couple days and I was saying to my neighbor asked me about it I said well we've had this conversation before it says it's the difference between weather and climate and um, I don't think he quite knew what I was talking about I didn't want to say the words Arctic amplification because uh, he would freak out, probably freak out about that, but essentially, you know, you got the jet stream creating a, a big loop in the, from the Arctic being warmer in comparison to the equator, so it slows down the jet stream and makes amplitude stronger, so you get these extreme weather shifts of the Arctic weather coming down, and then the Arctic weather going back up and the equator weather coming back up and we've had we had rain in uh, January and rain in February and that's totally unheard of in uh, Minnesota so we're getting this extreme weather but it's because of the climate so I have extreme haircuts because of the climate of my one haircut a year so right now I got extreme haircut from today compared to yesterday when I had long hair actually this morning looked like a long homeless hippie guy long haired hippie homeless guy and now I look like a kamikaze <laughs> and um and so It'll be cold again in a couple days, but I'm already starting the lawn work. And just go with the flow, you know? And I'm still stunned that um, people on the interwebs want to ignore abrupt global warming. They think it's a... Um, a narrative a a news story instead of hard science but um, we live in a scientific time all of our high technology is based on science and so it behooves us to study science to find out what's going on so I encourage people to um, read the various science sources on the interwebs the google scholar the archive for preprint or the sci hub for the peer-reviewed paypal paywalled science articles that normally require a paid subscription to a database that you'd have to access through a university or college if you use the sci-hub then you can access that as a mirrored website and the lady who made that website has to be in hiding because the the academic journals don't don't like her spreading the free science but most people never use Sci-Hub anyway, so that's my joke, is that 
you have the freedom to be willfully ignorant because she is in hiding. Because this lady, I think she, she lives in Russia now, but I think she's from the Ukraine originally. Um, maybe she's like Russian, Ukrainian or something. But she was in the West, living in the West for a while. But she had to be under, you know, using a false name or whatever. I think she uses her real name, but she just, you know, in the on the internet she uses her real name. But like in real life, she in the West she, I don't know if she, I don't know if she used a false name or if she just like protected herself, you know, online her her presence. I'm not sure how how she did it. And. So the structural drive of science is like our, our religion that we rely on to find out the truth of reality. But if we keep digging deeper into science, then we find out even the, the mathematics has lied to us based on the wrong music theory. And so the the science will lead us to the beyond the science to the the um beyond but it it also explains our abrupt global warming ecological crisis because the science has been based on the wrong mathematics so a lot of people they think they're part of the counterculture or alternative science or whatever, but they're not really analyzing the structural drive of science. So they're still stuck within the mainstream science parameters because they haven't really taken a deep look at the structural mathematics. That's the language of science. And this originates from music theory. And so the music theory then leads you back to meditation and philosophy, non-Western philosophy. And like, like Buddhist philosophy that, or in India, you know, they get the, the head shaved to show that material reality originates from light matter originates from light and this is proven by physics and the light itself originates from what they call formless awareness or the ether shakti the which is actually this gravitational mass of light from the time reversed negative frequency signal that's non-commutative from the quantum non-commutative algebra as non-locality and this explains negative entropy as the answer to the ecological crisis and so it's the truth is hiding right out in the open it's also the secret to anti-gravity. Um, but for some reason, there's this religion of technology in the West as a platonic materialism because they people they they haven't really questioned that platonic foundation of the what I call the rotten root or the liar of the liar. So they're chasing around what they consider to be cover-ups or lies, but they don't get at the rotten root, as I call it, which is based on the wrong structural mathematics. But the um, mathematicians who figured out non-commutativity they've openly stated this has to do with the difference between the discrete and the continuum 
And so this this goes to the very origin of mathematics. And so we're we're lied about in um when we're still barely in high school, you know, like 14, 14 years old, 15. When we learn the Pythagorean theorem is the power axiom set, and we learn it's the most well-proven theorem, but it doesn't take into account the time inherent in the phase shift between the um, different magnitudes of the triangle for the hypotenuse. This was um, explained to me by math professor Lou Kaufman when I emailed him about the Pythagorean theorem actually being non-commutative. And he, he agreed. He said, well, if you consider the continuous fraction solution, then it there is an an iteration, an infinite iteration that alternates as an oscillation that's neither the height nor the base of the triangle. And based on that solution of neither the height nor the base, do you then supposedly achieve a geometric convergence to the hypotenuse, but as he points out, this time shift is inherently asymmetric, and therefore um, the oscillation between one and negative one is um, inherently non-commutative. So he defines the um, Pythagorean theorem based on one and one. But if you, as assuming a Euclidean geometry, and in fact, um, the non commutative argument is that space time is inherently curved, inherently curved because when we listen, it's a spherical process of listening that's actually a, a block sphere which means you have an uncertainty between the momentum and the position based on the imaginary number and Planck's constant as the average energy of light but as uh, Juliana Mortensen has pointed out um, and few other people, the Planck's constant assumes a symmetric uh, unit of seconds that then is able to cancel out the cycle as time. And so Juliana Mortensen argues, well, you should just have time. You should just have a cycle and just, just define Planck's constant based on a cycle as a unit. But in fact, it's a non-commutative process of measurement with the time. And you can see my, I think, he, I think the barber missed one little hair. So anyway, um, the normally from Planck, it's considered that the quantum action is that that's the, the minimum um, unit based on size and so the Heisenberg uncertainty is defined by the size uh, from Planck's constant but as Basel J. Hiley points out this um, assumption of Planck's constant uh, it it actually is a diversion from the true source of the uncertainty being from non-local non-commutativity based on the environment. So the non-commutative quantum 
potential actually takes into consideration the ex experimental environment and that that's not limited to the Planck constant scale so the Planck, the Planck constant is a scaling factor but the quantum potential itself is a phase that's non-local because the phase has this negative frequency inherent to it before there's any squaring for the position or the momentum and so this was originally discovered due to Heisenberg studying the transition frequencies of the ritz rydberg combination principle that rely on the difference between frequencies so it's a discrete difference in contrast to a um, assumption of a geometric continuum that's symmetric from as a differential using the Fourier analysis so this very basic principle of the the difference in frequency actually returns us back to the Pythagorean non-Western philosophy of the what Alain Kahn calls two three infinity, um, and of course scientists, physicists, they need to you know, assume they can control things for external measurement that then becomes applied science as engineering or whatever experiments they're doing for technology. But as Alain Kahn points out, the, the illusion of a primitive causality of linear time originates from this deeper infinity of two three infinity that's non-commutative and it's going on all the time before there is linear time so you have the past and the future overlapping all the time before any measurement takes place it's just described in the mathematics itself and based on the logic uh, that originates from music theory actually and so um, it's a fascinating uh, intersection of music theory philosophy math and mathematics and then science as a whole you know physics and it's just a, based on a basic logical error that I noticed in high school because I was studying music theory and philosophy. And so I held on to that logical error and then it took the non-commutative math analysis of music theory to corroborate what I had confirmed is actually the truth of reality as experienced through non-Western meditation. And so um, Eddie Oceans figured this out also working at Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. And um, it's uh it's kind of it's almost hilarious how people haven't noticed this basic logical error but i guess you know since science is our religion then um everybody's quick to worship the religion of science um due to you know the power of technology or the need to get some kind of te technical training for a better job or whatever. Um, so, 
the the um, Alon Khan he even gave a heated debate at a conference on Wolfgang Pauli and synchronicities from Pauli's collaboration with Carl Jung, the psychologist. And Alon Khan argued that the um, synchronicities that are acausal and non-local are due to non-commutativity. And Jung even considered that the quantum physics to be a Pythagorean tetractus as the number four, with the four being the basic four elements of non-commutativity from the Planck's constant and the imaginary number and the position and the momentum. And you combine those four and you have the basic four ingredients of all you need to then consider the non-commutativity that underlies those dynamics all the time. So I'm just going to leave it at that and let the physicists try to develop their algebra. But in fact, the secret is through the music as meditation directly that um, is explained from this non-commutative logic. So that, that's been my goal, is to reverse engineer my meditation training that tested out my music theory hypothesis and to seek out a Western science explanation for this secret. And, and now I've confirmed it is indeed non-commutativity. And it still remains unacknowledged by almost all scientists uh, on this deeper level. Um, and, of course, the corollary is that the abrupt global warming ecological crisis is precisely due to this psychological repression of the non-commutative logic that is the underlying structure to the commutative geometry is symmetry um, that is the basis for all of modern science And so, um, you know, even the, even the non-commutative scientists like, um, Basil J. Hiley and Alan Kahn and Lou Kaufman, they're quick to convert their non-commutativity back into the symmetric commutative mathematics um, for whether it's like the Dirac operator or whatever it happens to be but we know from Eddie Oceans that in fact the non-commutativity is not limited to the quantum micro scale and therefore it can be applied in the opposite direction as the secret of the non-Western philosophy, whether it's the three gunas of India, the most ancient philosophy of India was the three gunas, or the oldest philosophy of China, which is Taoism, where our original human culture relying on the gum, gum energy all from music theory 
every human culture using the octave and perfect fifth and perfect fourth music. So it's a very simple um, truth that originates from before even human language was solidified into different dialects because it's been proven that the Elan bowl dance as sacred spiritual music is the same song in the different um, oldest human languages, the two oldest dialects of human language have the same exact Elan bowl song, even though those tribes have been were separated for 30,000 years So we know that this Elon Bull Dance spiritual training is at least 30,000 years old. And then based on the snake statue from 70,000 years ago and also the comparison of the Australian Aborigines with the San Bushman, the rainbow snake, um, Rainbow time, snake, energy, it's the same in both cultures, as um, Professor Chris Knight points out. And so the females sing all night long to project their energy while the males dance all night long to then transform the energy and send it back into the females. And this is the secret um, basis of the spiritual healing training. And it works through the lunar calendar along with the solar calendar and the earth energy. And that works to support life on earth. And so that's what created humans as a culture, as uh, Chris Knight explains in his radical anthropology research group, based on this non-commutative secret. It's also detailed in the book, um, The Harmless People by Dr. Elizabeth Marshall Thomas, how the whole culture was based on these complementary opposites um, around the num um energy and so the the training goes beyond modern science and beyond academia but it it incorporates those disciplines so that people have the option of trying to study the phenomenon through quantum biology and biophotons and various other means just as they have the option of studying abrupt global warming using whatever technology they need available to them to engineer and this is not going to save us but it will help the religion of science explain itself as to why the crisis is happening and how it will continue to accelerate and unfold. And people can choose to ignore the science because the science relies on the technology as its, as its focus. It's a self-evolving 
mathematical construct that churns out new technology on a structural level. And this is what drives the industrial wealth that's extracted from the planet and the illusion of efficiency as um, linear time for progress. So Alain Kahn explains that the origin of entropy is actually due to this deeper negative entropy um, non-commutativity. Um, so as the as things accelerate on the planet then there's going to be more confusion about why there's these extremes of weather and extremes of social injustice and if we understand non-commutativity then we can understand those extremes on a deeper level the underlying structural drive of those extremes and uh, Roger Penrose has offered us a good explanation of the deeper dichotomy between gravitational entropy and the entropy of matter and um, even Lawrence Krauss, when he interviewed Penrose, he didn't engage with this idea at all. He didn't engage with Penrose's latest research. He just said, oh, I've read your latest book, but that was 10 years ago. And he ignored Penrose's lectures and talks on that got posted to YouTube and interviews even though Penrose is 91 years old. So people are part of the religion of technology because they worship technology, but they're not willing to really study the science that is the structural drive behind the religion. And so this is a, also the key to studying the spirituality as my um, training manual explains. So, you know, people who understand what I'm talking about, they just go to my training manual. It's a free training manual. And they just start using that training manual and that's it. They don't need, they don't need to contact me anymore. They're, it's already working for them. Sometimes I'll hear back from them and they'll share, update how things are going and then the train manual exists on its own. It's not like dependent on my own training. It's the principles of the training that are the key. Um, and that depends on your environment. If you can create a good environment for the training, then it'll make your training a um, hundred times easier. And that's why it's difficult to find people who've succeeded in the training because the training environments have been wiped out just along with the destruction of ecology. It used to be that people trained in the forest, whether it was in West Africa or in the Congo, um, in, in Taoism, um, 
even in West Asia, there was still forests left. The, then they developed uh, monasteries and many of those got destroyed or else they got taken over by people who didn't train in the monastery. So they got controlled by the, the secular modern modernized people that didn't understand the true purpose of the monasteries for the forest meditation, like in Thailand or Southeast Asia, Cambodia. Anyway, um, the, the, of course, the modern West has lacked yoga as a training or cave meditation. So there's only been a few rare examples of various monks or nuns that have achieved the extreme uh, spiritual abilities based on this deep listening process through meditation. And they might not consciously know why they just are following their 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 deeper drive so somebody like Saint Teresa de Avila she told her her fellow nuns to not leave the monastery because they're symptoms of being in a spiritual um, state would be misinterpreted, misunderstood, and not appreciated by the modern Western culture. And of course, uh, St. Joseph de Copertino, he was confined to his room as punishment, but in fact that actually increased his level of training because that was the they didn't know that that was the actual environmental condition for him to demonstrate levitation and so that's how it goes in the in the west it's been a haphazard stumbling along of a few few people who've discovered these abilities um, so that's pretty much it um, the the truth is very simple yet it's very radical and not easy to practice because it takes time and it takes a transformation of time. Um, and so now Mother Nature is taking revenge against modern Western civilization based on the religion of technology. So there's no need to try to convince anybody or convert anybody the problem will be taken care of on its own through the power of Mother Nature. Um, and I'll just leave it at that for now. Thanks.